Would you say you can confidently define what civil engineering is? Hey everyone, I'm Dennis, a third year civil engineering undergraduate student at Imperial College London. And as suggested by a friend, today I'm discussing what it is like to study civil engineering at Imperial College London. So whether you are a student looking at potential degrees to study, or you're just interested, this is a perfect video for you. Because to be completely honest, schools don't do enough to expose their students to what certain degrees are like. I mean, before I applied to study civil engineering, I had absolutely no clue what it was. And when I tell others I study civil engineering, they just go, oh, so you build bridges or you're a BTEC Bob the Builder. So today I'm gonna to dispel the myths and tell all you lot plain and simple what it is and what it's like to study. So first of all, what is civil engineering? I guarantee it is much more broad than you think. It is not just the construction of bridges and buildings, it's also the maintenance of water systems, sewage systems. Plain and simple, civilization needs civil engineers. I mean, in my first lesson at Imperial, the lecturer said that civil engineers save more lives than medics, but feel free to disagree in the comment section. So if you love maths and physics and you want to apply that in a way that can help people and society, civil engineering quite possibly could be the best degree for you. Okay, so let's talk about what it's like to study civil engineering at Imperial College London. And make no mistake about it, it is intense. There's multiple hours of lectures a day. There is a lot of work, guys. This isn't that type of degree you can just put on the back burner, do what you want, party every day, and then, oh, I've got a test, let me just revise the night before. No, 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 no. Make no mistake about it, you will have to work hard, but it is extremely intellectually stimulating and you are put in a group of people that are like-minded, just like you, extremely intelligent individuals. Okay, so Imperial only offer a four-year master's engineering degree. I'm not really sure why they don't offer a bachelor's. It is what it is, but the modules are not too different to other universities, except, of course, the intensity is higher. Okay, so split screening me here, I'll have the year one program specification. I'm gonna talk through each of the modules, give my advice on them, which ones are hard, which ones are not so hard, and what to do to really get the best out of your degree. Okay, the first thing to note is that every module for year one is core, meaning you can't opt out of it like you can for electives. Year one has 10 modules. Think of modules kind of like a subject, like it would be in school, GCSEs or A-levels. And mathematics has 10 credits, professional engineering practice has 7.5, as well as civil engineering design, which has 7.5, with the rest of the modules having five credits. So the way I'd look at it is maths is kind of like a double module. It's worth double credits if you think of it like that. Okay, so going through each of the modules, starting with professional engineering practice, this is the essay writing portion of the degree. I think a lot of people go into engineering because they hope they're not gonna do a lot of essay writing. And although that is true, you will have to for this. You have a, an essay to do at the start of term and in the second half of term, you have some surveying to do, which is basically going out onto sites and taking readings. They will discuss it more there. I actually thought it was quite fun because we had the field trip to accompany it, but the field trip is quite intense. It was actually nine till 6 p.m. work for a week straight. Next, we have civil engineering design. In your first time, you have a topic called sketching and modeling. This is where you're building a pop-up, where half the team will actually build the pop-up in real life with paper and cards, and the other half will use software such as Rhino and Grasshopper to build it. And in the second term, you have two separate design projects that are each one week long. These are kind of like Marmite. Some people love these design projects, others hate them. I personally love them because you get put in groups of seven to eight people, and it's not like university normal ones where you just go to lectures and study. You get given a week to do a project from start to finish. They give you a brief. You have to present every day to lecturers and talk amongst yourselves and come up with different ideas or engineering schemes to fix a problem in society. We had one about refugee camps, one about Battersea Power Station, creating transport models, all types of problems. I like them. It allows you to apply your soft skills to talk to people, collaborate with people in your group. And I just think it's a really good week overall. Okay, so those two modules, I think, are in their own bracket. They're kind of special in that sense. They're group work heavy and they have no terminal exam. The remaining eight modules in year one do have a terminal exam at the end of the year, however. Starting with mathematics, that is one of the tougher modules, to be honest. In year one, it is worth double credit, so you do have to put extra effort towards it. There's progress tests throughout the year. I believe there's four in total to see how you're getting on and a final exam worth a majority of the mark for the module. When you first start in year one, maths actually give you a test straight away. Basically it's called a progress type checkup test. It tests your A-level knowledge and because Imperial has a lot of students from all over the world, it's got a high proportion of international students, it basically wants to see where everyone's at. The teacher says, if you get above 70%, you'll be fine. A lot of people got below that. A lot of people actually got between 60 and 70%. So don't be too disheartened if you get that. And if you get much lower, don't worry whatsoever. They're not going to kick you out of uni. All that means they put you on some like intervention lessons, extra maths lessons, office hours throughout the weeks throughout the first term to kind of bring you up to speed with the rest of the students. The main topics that are covered in year one mathematics is ODEs, PDs, linear algebra, basically things like matrices, eigenvectors, eigenvalues. I'd also get up to date with integration, 
differentiation, etc. Next, we have computational methods one. This is another word for coding. You'll be learning MATLAB, which is what all the engineers do, no matter if you do civil engineering, aero, mechanical. MATLAB is basically a software to do coding on. Don't worry, they start by assuming everyone has zero knowledge in MATLAB prior to starting this degree. So they do start with teaching you how to do it, but they do ramp it up quickly. So if you're someone that struggles to code, kind of like I did at the start, I would recommend in the summer to brush up on MATLAB a little bit, see how it works, see the basics, see how coding works in general, and that will help put you in good stead for when the degree starts. Next, we have mechanics, and this is also split into two terms. I think the first term was actually fairly easy. It kind of followed on from A-level physics, and in the second term, they brought out some new concepts that also developed in year three of civil engineering degree. Structural mechanics was very similar to mechanics, and honestly, it's probably the most relevant for civil engineering. You analyze beams and something called trusses, which you'll get to know throughout your time at civil engineering. I quite enjoyed it because it was a lot of physics and maths implemented. Next, you have materials. This module has no coursework. It's purely got an exam at the end of the year, and you just have to learn this information. There's no maths to implement. There's no physics to implement. It is purely information, lecture slides and lecture slides of information that you just have to learn and regurgitate in the exam. It is multiple choice, but there is negative marking, meaning that if you get a question wrong, they actually deduct marks. If you don't attempt it, you get zero marks. And if you get it right, of course you get marks. Next, we have Fluid Mechanics 1. And this, without a doubt, was the hardest module of year one. This was physics completely on steroids. You had to apply mathematical and physics knowledge to fluids, meaning in liquids, in gases, it was so, so hard. Utilize all the help and tutorials you can get for this subject, because honestly, a lot of people struggled. I performed the worst at the end of year one in fluid mechanics, so don't be surprised if you found it hard. It's not a knock on your intelligence whatsoever. It's a really hard module. Everyone that does civil engineering says it. Next, we have geotechnics, which is kind of similar to materials in the sense that it is a lot of regurgitating information. However, there is some maths and physics applied to some calculations. Although the calculations, let's be honest, they're not that hard. It's definitely not as hard as mathematics or fluid mechanics, for example. But that being said, it's not one of the most enjoyable modules for a lot of people, but there is an exam at the end of it. There's a coursework as well down the middle, which is worth 20%. But overall, it's not the hardest module. And finally, we have energy and environmental engineering, which goes down as one of the worst modules to study. Everyone hates it at Imperial. You might like it. There's nothing against it. The reason a lot of people hate it is because a lot of people go into studying engineering because they've studied maths and physics. And this module is purely biology and chemistry. Like we're doing chemical reactions. We're learning about plants and stuff. I have no clue why. It just goes to show how broad civil engineering is. So those are all the modules that you will study in year one. I'm going to give some tips now on how to do the best in year one of civil engineering. Number one is focus on maths because that feeds into a lot of other modules. The maths knowledge that you get is so, so important to help you with the fluid mechanics, structural mechanics, mechanics in general, even geotechnics. It's a double module as well, mathematics one. So make sure you put a lot of effort into understanding it. Another tip is during the first year of university, everyone's new. They're meeting each other for the first time. Don't go into university thinking, oh, I'm macho man. I can do it all myself. I don't need any help. No, 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 no. University involves a lot of collaboration. So get to know people, have a lot of people on your side, and it will help you during courseworks and exams. Thirdly, don't be too hard on yourself if you fall behind in certain modules. I remember during year one, I kind of didn't revise much with geotechnics, materials, and environmental engineering, because I knew they were a lot of regurgitating information. So there was no point learning it early because I'd forget it by the time the exam comes. Instead, I spent a lot of time focusing on the mass related modules and that helped me because then when exam period came, I spent a lot of time basically crash course learning all the materials knowledge, the energy and environmental knowledge and geotechnics knowledge. And that helped me because I remembered it during the exam. And finally, make sure you prioritize courseworks. Courseworks can be so, so important for helping to supplement your grades because the final exams, anything can happen. They can be really hard. But as long as you get the courseworks down and done, that's easy marks in the bank for you to carry forward to the exams. I'm now going to move on to the second year of studying civil engineering at Imperial College London. But if you want extra tips on how to survive the first year, check this video up here at the end. It's an end screen card talking about how to survive your first year at university. Okay, so split screen me here. I have the program structure for year two. The subjects that have, that have a two next to them, they're basically continuation from the year one modules. So I won't go too in depth with them to be honest. Although I will note that Fluid Mechanics 2 is much easier than Fluid Mechanics 1. So don't get too distressed when you saw that there was another Fluid Mechanics module. Okay, so to be honest, there's three new modules in year two. Statistics, Structural Design, and Business and Project Management. Statistics I thought would be easy to be honest. And it starts really easy. They basically go over the topics you learn in A-level maths if you don't do statistics and mechanics as one of your modules as part of Edexcel. They talk through things like Venn diagrams, probability, tree diagrams, all that stuff. I was thinking, oh, this is easy. But that second term, 
Boy, does it get hard. That was actually one of my worst performing modules by the end of the year, which I was so surprised about. Because I remember during A-level maths, I really enjoyed and found statistics quite easy. Structural design has no terminal exam. Instead, it's got two two-day projects worth 50% each. The first term revolves around concrete and you have a two-day project on that. And the second term revolves around steel and you have a two-day project on that as well. The lectures for this subject are actually really good. They really know their stuff and they're able to explain it well. And finally, the third new module is business and project management. Whatever you think this is, I promise you it's not that. <laughs> it's not as fun as it sounds. It's literally just learning about health and safety within civil engineering. That is it. I thought it would actually be really good. Like we're learning about how to lead people, about businesses, not at all. There's an essay you have to do, one individually and one as a group, and that makes up the bulk of your marks. As shown here, all the modules for year two are core as well, so you have to take all of them. Some tips I have regarding year two is that it is keen to note that is a very coursework heavy. In fact, year two is a module that's got more of its weighting on courseworks than it has final examinations. So definitely don't go behind on courseworks. A lot of modules are actually 100% courseworks, such as business and project management and structural design. There's only six examinations. You take the mathematics module during the end of the autumn term, I believe it's in January, then the West, rest of the exams in May. And for this one, soil mechanics and geology is worth 10 credits, just like maths was in year one and both civil engineering design and fluid mechanics are worth 7.5 credits with the rest of the modules being worth five credits. Okay, so moving into year three, the year I am currently in. This is the first year where you have electives, meaning you can choose modules to study. Starting with the core modules, as you can see, a lot of them do follow on from previous years being labeled, for example, civil engineering design three. Although there's no mathematics this year, they do expect you to know the maths from years gone by and you will be implementing it a lot during year three. Computational engineering analysis has nothing to do with coding. Everyone went into it thinking, oh, it's going to be just like computational methods from year one and two. We do a lot of MATLAB. No, 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 nothing like that. We, we use a software called Abacus and it's a lot of actual structural design and a bit of geotechnics as well. So it's a combination of the two. I keep forgetting that it's actually computational engine analysis. I think I'm just learning structural mechanics or geotechnics at times. Dynamics of structures is another new module. It's basically kind of like learning about how structures move during events such as earthquakes, for example. You look at resonance as well, which is something you would have learned in A-level physics. It's quite a hard module actually. I'm not really looking forward to the exam that's in May this year for me. The other new module is transport systems. And this was the first time we were introduced to Python in a module during this degree and it took till year three. A lot of people know Python as one of the main coding languages. So I'm surprised it took this long to introduce us to it. In terms of the content for this module, it's actually a lot of regurgitated information, more than I thought. We learn about economic order quantities, basically how to supply factories, how products are moved from factories to customers and all the engineering behind that. Also in third year during civil engineering, you have something called iExplore. This is something Imperial do where you have to do one subject not related at all to your degree. You have a whole host of options. A lot of people do languages because for them it's quite easy, especially if they already speak that language. I myself chose accounting, which was very hard, but it was fun to learn and goes down on your degree and it counts. Although you do have to do I Explore, I will say that is purely a pass fail module. Meaning if you pass with 80% or 45%, you still get the five credits. Now we can move on to the electives in year three. You take one elective in the autumn term and one elective in the spring term, as you can see by the two bands here, A and B. The electives you take in autumn term, you will also have the opportunity to take them in the fourth year of studying. Now, for some reason, I have no idea why Imperial have done this, but the subjects that have a B next to them are the ones you take in autumn term, and the ones that have an A next to them are the ones you take in spring term. For the autumn term, I chose concrete structures. It was actually kind of a hard module, but to be honest, I think a lot of them are hard. And in the spring term, the term I'm currently in, I chose highway engineering, which is kind of like regurgitating information again. It's all about roads, etc. As you can see for year three, civil engineering design is worth 10 credits and the rest of the modules are only worth five credits. And how civil engineering design works in year three is that it's a month long after your May exams are done during June, when an external company comes in, they put you in groups and you actually have to do a month long project around it. And finally, we move on to the fourth and final year of studying civil engineering at Imperial College London. Here you have five electives you take in the autumn term and you can choose any. There's so many to choose from. However, there is some restrictions due to timetabling where they'll tell you at the start, oh, you can't take this module because it clashes during the timetable with another module. But other than that, you're free to choose whatever you want. I'm not currently in the fourth year, so I can't really give much information on what is good to take, what is bad to take. Just choose the ones you enjoy, I'd say. And finally, in the spring term, you have the individual research project, which is a massive dissertation on a topic you choose. That makes up the bulk of your mark in year four. It's worth 35 credits. In terms of the weightings per year at Imperial, year one does count, although it counts for very little. It's only worth 7.5%. I know for a lot of unis, year one doesn't actually count towards a degree, but it does for Imperial. 
Year two is worth 20% and both year three and year four are worth 36.25% of your overall degree. You need above 40% to pass. And if you get below 40%, you have to retake the module. And if you get below 40%, in two or more modules, you have to retake the year, I believe. Above 50% is a lower second or a 2-2. Two -two. Above 60% is an upper second and a 2-1. And above 70% is a first class honours. For a lot of internships and graduate schemes, they expect at least a 2-1. So you need to achieve at least 60% in university. Those are the main things to note when studying civil engineering at Imperial College London. I discussed a lot, but I guarantee I probably missed some things. So if you do have any questions, please make sure to let me know in the comment section. I'd be happy to answer any of them. And if you're new around here and you love to hear more student related content, this is the place to be. Make sure you like the video and more importantly, subscribe down below. If you enjoyed what I talked about and I actually wanted to apply to study engineering at Imperial College London, make sure to check out this video right here where I talk about how I got accepted to study engineering at Imperial College London. I go through the whole process from start to finish. I've been Dennis. I hope to see you all in my next video.